Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel and I don't have a ton of time to film this wrap up so I'm really gonna try to go through these 15 books really quickly. I've got a lot to do today. Editing Hannah is going to hate me because most of these books I borrowed from the library and I don't have a physical copy of. First category of books are all the books I reread as I attempted to fall asleep and I read four more Tamara Pierce books. What a, what a surprise. Uh, Emperor Mage, The Realms of the Gods, those are book three and four of the Immortal series, and then we have First Test and Page, which are the first two books in the Protector of the Small Quartet. To be honest, I love the Protector of the Small series a little bit more than the Immortal series, so I gave Page and First Test, five out of five stars. And then I think Emperor Mage and the Realms of the Gods, I gave three or four stars too. I just don't think these have necessarily aged as well for my reading tastes. The next category we have is romance. And I only read one romance book this month, and that is the sequel to The Roommate, and that is The Intimacy Experiment by Rosie Dannon. Now the intimacy experiment follows a side character from the roommate. So this follows Naomi Grant, who is a side character from the roommate and she meets a Jewish pastor and she is a former uh, porn star and they form this really unlikely partnership in terms of a business relationship where uh, Naomi is teaching the members of uh, the pastor's parish about um, modern day intimacy and uh, you know making human connections and it's really cute and I loved it. We've got a, a guest. We've got Naomi and we've got the rabbi Ethan and basically this is a really cute relationship. It's super slow burn and I quite enjoyed it and I actually gave it five out of five stars. I thought the the steamy scenes that they do have really worked for this type of character dynamic. Naomi has a lot of issues um, equating being physically intimate with someone with being emotionally intimate with someone because she was a former porn star and I thought that that was done really well in this book and I thought it was really cute. Five stars. Then we have two books that are categorized as a mystery book and a horror novel and the first book I'll talk about is uh, the mystery novel which is called Arsenic and Adobo by Mia P. Manansala. This is a story about a young woman who moves back home after college and she um, is working in her family's Filipino restaurant and her ex-boyfriend who is a food critic comes to the restaurant and is writing bad reviews about her family's restaurant and he ends up dead after eating at their restaurant. So the whole mystery is who killed this food critic and our main character is the prime suspect. This book I thought was cute. I thought it was a little fun. I ended up giving it three stars. I didn't think it was great. Um, it's a cozy mystery which I'd never heard that term before but this is I mean this book is a cozy mystery to a T. It's very lighthearted, it's not very violent, or it, it, there's a lot of descriptions of food, uh, which is a lot of fun. Um, but I thought there were a lot of unbelievable elements in this book. I thought it was a little far-fetched, um, and I just didn't feel as wholly immersed in the story and the characters as some other mysteries I've read. So I ended up giving it three stars. Still enjoyed this book, but not a new favorite for me. The horror novel I read is called Sorrowland by Rivers Solomon and I ended up giving this book three stars as well. This is following a character named Vern who escapes a religious cult as she is like nine months pregnant and she ends up giving birth to twins in the woods and after she gives birth she starts going through some changes in her body that are a little suspicious. She starts getting some supernatural abilities, let's say. And unfortunately, I thought this was just okay. This is the third book I read by the author. Um, and I like this author's 
ideas, but I think the execution of the ideas are just not for me. I have, yeah, yeah, I think that's what I'll say. And the big issue I have with every single one of their books is pacing. I just, the pacing is always really strange to me. Uh, a lot of times in their works we'll get shifting point of views that don't really make sense to me um, and really jumps out and kind of pulls me out of the story when we get random points of view thrown in and that's no exception in Sorrowland. I like that Vern is an unlikable character <laughs> so pretty much if if there's a character that's a female and is unlikable I usually root for them but I think in this instance because of the pacing issues. I just didn't really connect with her and her story. This was also supposed to be a horror novel and I wasn't spooked and I'm a big pansy and I didn't think this was scary at all even though her body is going through some changes. It wasn't described in a way that evoked a ton of horror in me. So I just thought this was okay. I ended up giving it three stars and I don't know if I will read any more Rivers Solomon. This is kind of a three books that I gave like three stars each. So we'll see what they come out with next. Next category I have is fantasy and I only read two fantasy books this month. I, I read a ton of sci-fi. And unfortunately, the first book I have to talk about is a YouTube darling. Everybody, and their uncle loves this book and I did not enjoy it that much and that is Of Fire and Stars by Audrey Colthurst. This is like the OG YouTube sapphic fantasy romance and I will say this the romance in here is super cute. The the premise is we have two characters named Denna and Mare and Denna is a princess from uh, One Kingdom and she's betrothed to Mare's brother, who's the prince, uh, but Denna and Mare end up falling in love instead. And basically what boils down to is I love the romance in this book, but all of the political intrigue and like the plot behind the romance, I just couldn't get behind. It was very YA tropey and I just didn't care about it at all. <laughs> so I ended up giving this book a 2.5 out of 5 stars because I love the romance but the plot I just really didn't enjoy it and yeah I don't think I will finish the series. It's a it's a duology and I didn't think I needed to continue. They ride off into the sunset and I just imagine they live happily ever after. Um, it's a great sapphic romance, but I don't think it's a great book overall. The other fantasy book I read, I did a dedicated review for, and that is Elantris by Brandon Sanderson. If you're interested in my full thoughts on this book, I will leave a link in the little card. And basically, I loved this book, but it has problems <laughs> and problematic elements. So I ended up giving this like a 3, a 3.5 stars. All right, last category already is sci-fi. Now, this one kind of hurts me uh, that I didn't enjoy, but I finally finished the Far Sector comic books by N.K. Jemisin and Jamal Campbell. I really loved the opening of this series and the first, I don't know, six or seven volumes I gave basically all of them five out of five stars. And then as the series went on, there were some things that I wasn't enjoying and I really think the end of the series is kind of a disappointment. That really hurts me to say. Um, this is following our main character, Joe, who is a Green Lantern and she gets sent to a very distant part of the galaxy to solve a murder that is on a planet where they don't have any emotions. They actually have a, a type of chemical that suppresses the entire populace's emotions. So they're like, how could a murder occur on this planet? And things happen from there. Honestly, I thought the concepts in here were great, but the execution of the overall story was not there. It just happens too quickly. We don't get enough background on Joe. We do get some flashbacks, but 
Joe's Green Lantern powers are kind of a mystery, but that doesn't get resolved or explained at all by the end of the series. And the overall political, like, behind-the-scenes plot that's happening is a little weak, in my opinion. I That sounds really harsh. I love N.K. Jemisin so much, but I think 12 volumes wasn't enough, honestly, to convey everything that she was trying to convey, I think, with this story. The villain was also really bad, so just kind of a disappointment overall. I ended up giving like the series as a whole like three stars. Then I went on a K. Ankrum kick, so I read two K. Ankrum novels, and I'll talk about the one that I liked first and then the one I didn't like. So I that I read The Weight of Our Stars by Kay Ingram. This is another sapphic romance with a, a sci-fi twist to it. And I gave this a 3.5 stars. I thought this was great. It follows a young girl named Ryan and she's living in a trailer with her brother and her brother's kid and they're teenagers. And she, there's a new girl in town named Alexandria. And Kay Ingram, I think does a really good job discussing and conveying really messed up relationships um and I think they Kay Ankrum does that really well the plot of this one I thought this is a pretty short novel as well was pretty enjoyable but not a new favorite I did enjoy the romance there's a poly uh, a polyamorous set of parents loved that and it was totally normal um, this is very queer, and the, the sci-fi elements that were present, I enjoyed. I wish there was more sci-fi elements, uh, just for my personal taste, but I thought this was executed fairly well. So I gave it a 3.5 stars. Our second book I read was called The Wicker King, and this is also exploring a toxic um, uh, male, loving male relationship. Um, with fantasy elements, but I don't think it was the fantasy elements were there at all. I I hate to say I hated it, but I think I hated this book um, because of the lack of fantasy when it was touted as a fantasy, and it just didn't really make sense to me. The toxic male relationship I thought was, again, explored really well, but like everything else about this book I really really did like and I ended up giving it 1.5 stars. I saved my one stars for books that I really hated um or were offensive and I don't think this book was offensive but it just like really rubbed me the wrong way and I really didn't like it so eh, to the Wicker King um and I don't know if I will continue with Kay Ankrum but we'll see what else they come out with. Next let's talk about some books that I really loved and the first one is Isaac Asimov's The Gods Themselves. Look at how beautiful this edition is. Uh, this book follows some scientists who uh, discover that they can kind of suck energy from a parallel universe for free uh, and then the parallel universe is sucking energy from our universe so it's kind of like an exchange of energy and with this energy comes lots of potential to do all sorts of things to you know if energy is free what would that look like we would be able to go to the moon and start a colony and all that but there's a catch in the beginning one of the scientists figures out that if this is go goes on unchecked it will actually cause our sun to explode which is bad but no one believes the scientist who's kind of raising the, the alarm. And even if they do believe the scientist, they're not willing to stop. So, and then we also follow the alien side in the parallel universe as they kind of discover the same thing. I loved this. I gave this four stars. I thought this was almost perfect for me. Um, my favorite parts of this were that it's polyamorous and queer <laughs> and um Isaac Asimov explores alien relationships and sexual relationships 
in like a triad type configuration with these aliens and it's two males and a female alien in this relationship and I thought it was great. That was my favorite part of the book was um, getting to learn about this new this new species and like their relationship dynamics and their world that they live on and how they do science in their parallel universe. I thought that was fantastic. Uh, I will say there's a uh, I want to give a trigger warning for this for a uh, forced pregnancy that kind of caught me off guard <laughs> and I was like wow that's pretty dark um, and obviously it's treated as a bad thing. Um, so I just wanted to call that out <laughs> real quick. Something I've noticed about early sci-fi is that it's it's more about the concepts than it is about the characters and that's no exception with this work um, but the character the alien characters I thought were fantastic. The human characters um, maybe were slightly less developed than the aliens. It's kind of understandable that it's written in three parts and the third part is very a little boring, a little over my head. Um, this is very science heavy, so if you're uh, not used to science fiction, I wouldn't maybe not start here. Um, but if you're a more advanced sci-fi reader and you've already come across some of these physics concepts, um, I think this is a great m intermediate sci-fi, more advanced sci-fi. Uh, just because like the science was going over my head at the end. I was like, they're trying to explain this, the parallel universes things. And it's, I mean, a lot of it is very technical, but I really did like this a lot. Um, and four stars. Okay, two more. We've got A Psalm of the Wild Built by Becky Chambers, which is about a non-binary monk who decides to leave the abbey and become a tea monk. So they ride around on a bicycle that's towing a caravan and they go to from town to town and they open up the caravan and they serve tea to the inhabitants of the town and they basically operate as like free therapy um, and spiritual guidance for the townsfolk. They, you know, a place for a person to come and unburden themselves to this monk and have a nice cup of tea, which is really sweet, <laughs> honestly. And then, um, so uh, 400 years before um, the events of the novel, uh, basically all of the automated robots that we use in factories became sentient and walked off the job and decided to disappear into the forest. So no one has seen a, a robot in hundreds of years. And while our monk is riding around, a robot comes out of the woods and is like, hello human, let's have a discourse after hundreds of years of uh, robots and humans never speaking to each other. And this was in true Becky's Chambers fashion. Beautiful. This was so beautifully written, very character driven sci-fi, excuse me, and it made me cry at the end. This is, and it's truly really about these two characters, the robot and the monk, forming an unlikely partnership and the monk kind of exploring themes of their unhappiness and what makes them tick and their purpose in life. And, you know, what is my purpose? Is, has my purpose changed? You know, what, why am I here on this planet and, and all that stuff. So, you know, some big, heavy, emotional, themes for a character and I thought it was great. I cried at the end. Just like most of Becky Chambers books, this was great. It's really short. It's like a little novella and honestly that's probably my one criticism is I wish that this was even more fleshed out but this is becoming a series so hopefully we will see more of the monk and robot interacting with each other and having more adventures and exploring more of this world. So I ended up giving this like a 4.5 stars, 4.25, a little closer to a 4 than a 5 for me. The last book is The Light Brigade by Cameron Hurley. I will be reading more Cameron Hurley because I absolutely love this. I finished the book and I was like, what? 
<laughs> what just happened? And in the best way possible, I was confused. Our main character Dietz becomes a soldier in the army and we're told that there is a, a war with Mars so they can beam humans directly to Mars using light, which is why it's called the Light Brigade. And stuff goes awry with the beaming process, essentially. And Dietz is a really great character to follow. This is queer. <laughs> I've been loving the queer sci-fi recently, as you can tell. This is so anti-capitalism, anti-corporation. I just was, my little anti-capitalist heart was like, F these corporations. <laughs> um, so I really enjoyed that. So this kind of follows a, a an arc that I quite enjoy where a character is taught something, you know, all throughout their life, they're taught, you know, this is the true, this is the truth. And then throughout the course of the novel, they discover that they were lied to, or the situation is more nuanced than they were originally taught. And then they decide to burn it all to the ground. And that is one of my favorite, like, character moments and character arcs and that is what this book is about without spoiling things obviously but that is kind of the general story arc of this book i really enjoyed it i i will need to reread it because i think the ending um it's a, it's kind of rushed or like it isn't explained as fully as i would like which is why i gave it like a 4.5 stars but honestly, I think it's kind of meant to be a little open-ended, a little like what the F just happened. Go into this one knowing that it's a little bit woo-woo. <laughs> it's not quite right, but a little bit effervescent, a little bit more open-ended at the very end of the book. Those were the 15 books I read in July. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next video very soon. Bye!